This video is brought to you by Robotis. I like building robots, and of the many things I use in order to bring a robot to life, one of the most important is a servo, like this little guy right here. This is a Dynamixel. It's a smart servo made by Robotis, and this is specifically an X-series servo, and I used 11 of these to bring my animatronic Wheatley to life. Now this was the secret sauce that made him compact, powerful, and easy to control. And while these are great, and I definitely plan on using them in the future, what if I want to build something bigger? A lot bigger. Way bigger. Okay, maybe, maybe not that big. I don't quite have the budget for a Jaeger yet. But I'm still really excited because Robotis sent over this beautiful package right here, and let's just open it up and see what's inside, huh? You're looking at the newest high-powered actuator from Robotis, the Dynamixel Y. Specifically, the YM070-210-RO99-RH. But that's a bit of a mouthful. All that really means is that it's 70 millimeters in diameter, a 210 watt motor, has a 99 to 1 reduction, communicates via RS45, and runs at 24 volts. This is just one of two base models too, the other being 80 millimeters in diameter. It's also one of two gear ratios currently available, if you want more speed. And there are even more configurations coming, like actuators with built-in brakes. Although you can see it fits comfortably in my hand, to give you a better reference of its size, at only 70 millimeters in diameter, it's just a bit wider than your average soda can, and nearly square in profile at just 71.1 millimeters tall. This chunky little cylinder only weighs 767 grams, but more uniquely, it's also a hollow shaft actuator, which means you can run wires through the 14 millimeter center hole, which helps keep things tidy if you were to integrate this into a larger robot assembly. But the spec I'm most interested in is torque. How much real world force can this provide? Let's set it up. The motor runs at 24 volts and communicates via RS-45. It comes with the necessary cables and some wire ferrules, so I crimp those onto some 18 gauge silicone wire and inserted them into the screw terminal connectors. Triple checking that I've got the polarity right. I'm powering it with a 24 volt, 200 watt AC to DC power supply, so we've got enough juice for the test. In order to actually control it, I'm going to connect it to my laptop via this U2D2 module, which is a little converter that can provide an RS-45 connection between my laptop and the actuator. I'm using the Robotis Dynamixel Wizard, which is a desktop app for monitoring and configuring their actuators. I was able to connect the servo easily, but I couldn't get it to move. I did read the manual, but got a little ahead of myself as I forgot to install a battery, and the servo demands that this battery be installed first. It's got a built-in backup battery, for the output encoder. This enables it to hold its absolute position after power cycling. And after popping the battery in, I was good to go. I've mounted the Dynamixel Y to the edge of this table and printed out a 100 millimeter servo arm. Now we can see just how powerful it really is. The spec sheet says it's rated for 14.6 newton meters of continuous torque, peaking at 31.7 newton meters, which is pretty impressive, but those are just theoretical numbers until we see it in action. I started with the two pound weight, which the servo didn't flinch at. Let's add another five pounds to see what happens. Still, no sweat. Okay, let's just jump straight to the finish line, shall we? I'm adding 25 more pounds to the bucket. At this point, the rope is stretching, the servo horn is bending, and the table itself is tilting. But the Dynamix Y is unflinching. I've just barely scratched the surface of what this thing can do. There are a lot of features that I'm not covering in this short video. It's got things you would expect like tunable PID values and things you probably wouldn't like a virtual gear reduction ratio so that if you put this into a geared down system, it can accommodate that in its own internal position controller so that your host controller doesn't have to figure that out, which I think is pretty neat. So if you want to learn more about the Dynamixel Y, you can check Robotis out via the link in the description. Thanks again to Robotis for sending this over. I have big plans for this little servo because, you know, I can't just let this gather dust in my garage. It's destined to be put into a cool advanced robot. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. So stick around for that. 
And as always, thank you to my supporters over on Patreon, especially Adam759. You really are a hero.